Hi, this is the presentation for homogenized yarn level cloth by Georg Sperl, Rahul Narayan and Chris Voitan. The fabrics we use and wear in everyday life have very different properties. For example, woven cloth does not stretch a lot and generally results in a tighter fit. On the other hand, knitted cloth is much more stretchy and fits a bit more comfortably. So what's interesting is that just by constructing the fabric from a different yarn structure, you can get a completely different elastic behavior. Depending on the pattern, the yarns interact differently with each other on a small scale, and this interaction has a large scale effect on the cloth. Here, we see a knitted fabric being stretched. The knit pattern consists of connected rows of loops, which when stretched pull on the adjacent rows. This creates a literal chain reaction that pulls in material on the large scale. And so just from yarns interacting locally, we suddenly have a cloth that tries to preserve area under tension. Along the other direction, the fabric resists stretching just a bit more, showing that the resistance is anisotropic or direction dependent. The bending behavior is similarly dependent on the pattern, as well as the direction, and is hard to predict without a full simulation. For this reason, there is a large body of work investigating the direct simulation of individual yarns or stitches, from the original yarn level cloth, over modeling persistent contacts between yarns, to robust mixed Eulerian Lagrangian discretizations of yarns. However, the high detail of yarn level simulation naturally comes with a high computational cost and simulating larger and larger fabrics quickly becomes too expensive. Finite element-based cloth simulations, on the other hand, are much more efficient and scalable. They approximate the material as a continuum and discretize the cloth with a triangle mesh as needed. The material can then be described by an elastic energy that takes as input the local deformation and outputs a value that the cloth wants to minimize by deforming towards a rest state. Unfortunately, it is non-trivial to find an energy function that models the complex behavior arising from various yarn patterns or properties. But if we take another look, we have seen that the complex local interactions of yarns lead to large-scale effects, so it should be possible to model these effects by approximating the cloth as sort of a continuous rubber sheet with a very specific material response and to abstract away the individual yarns. The question is how to come up with an appropriate continuum material. One solution is to try and fit material parameters from real-world measurements of a piece of fabric, although this does require some testing machinery. Alternatively, if we consider that the cloth is made from repeating tiles of some yarn pattern, it makes sense that this tile should tell us something about how the cloth behaves. And this is basically the idea behind homogenization, to transition from local micro-scale effects on the yarn level to an average macro-scale cloth response. In effect, this means taking virtual measurements of a tiny piece of fabric, but doing this virtually makes it much easier to generate data for arbitrary deformations like combined stretching and bending compared to real-world measurements. In 2018, Schumacher et al. developed a tool to similarly investigate tilings of planar rod patterns. Our method can be seen as an extension to a fully nonlinear model for non-planar yarn patterns. To give an overview of our method, from homogenization theory, we derive periodic boundary conditions that impose cloth scale stretching and bending on yarn scale simulations, from which we can then average a cloth scale energy density value. We generate data by doing this for many deformations and then fit an energy density function that describes the full pattern dependent elastic response. Then we simply plug this into a finite element cloth solver and obtain results that match full yarn level simulations at a fraction of the cost. Since we only have to simulate a small tile on the micro scale, generating the data is fast. Then the fitting is basically instantaneous and we can exploit the benefits of mesh-based simulation such as remeshing or in scalability, achieving an order of magnitude speed up even on moderate scales. At larger scales, our models can reproduce the behavior of knitted cloth in a reasonable amount of time. In the following, I will go through the parts of the pipeline shown here. I'll focus mostly on the homogenization side and give a more brief description of the rest before showing some results. We'll begin by looking at homogenization. Our goal here is to develop a strategy to get a cloth scale energy density value from a yarn level simulation. On the macro scale, the cloth is modeled as a thin shell, illustrated here in 2D by a mid surface with a thickness to it. At every point, we can measure the local deformation using the first and second fundamental forms where the first fundamental form 1 bar describes in-plane stretching and shearing, and the second fundamental form 2 bar describes bending. We also have an energy density psi bar at that point, 
measuring the elastic response to the deformation. We use bar notation here to denote quantities on a cloth scale as compared to quantities on the yarn level. On the micro scale, the cloth has some microstructure to it, which in our case means yarns. Then the homogenization procedure is to take the macro scale deformation and apply it to the micro scale, inspect how it reacts, and average its energy back up to an energy density value on the macro scale. To do this, we need to describe the micro scale yarn structure and figure out how to apply the macro scale deformation to it. Since we want to homogenize a material for cloth made from periodic patterns, a periodic tile of the pattern is a natural choice for representing the micro scale. To deform the pattern according to the macro scale deformation, we propose finding a mid-surface phi whose fundamental forms are constant and equal to the macro scale ones. That is, a surface with the correct stretching and bending everywhere. Then we deform the yarn pattern along with it. Specifically, we can describe the deformed pattern as phi plus hn, where phi is the surface, n is the normal to the surface, and h is the distance along the normal. We show in the paper that we can compute phi by solving a simple Poisson equation. And here's a 3D example of yarns deforming with the surface. However, while this does deform the yarn pattern according to the macroscale information, it does not consider at all what is happening on the microscale itself. This bulk deformation ignores collision or other interactions between the yarns. We would like for the yarns to react to the bulk deformation while still preserving its quality. This is commonly achieved by introducing a microscale fluctuation field, U tilde, which allows microscale movement away from the bulk deformation. For example, for a stretched knit pattern, the bulk deformation stretches everything, including the distance between the yarns. The fluctuations then account for the yarns tightening because of being stretched. However, without further constraints, there is no reason that the fluctuations wouldn't just cancel the bulk deformation and allow the yarns to go back into an unstretched state completely ignoring the macro deformation. Therefore, it is necessary to also introduce constraints on the fluctuation field that should preserve the macro deformation on average. In essence, there are two constraints. The first is simply constraining the average of u tilde to be zero, which prohibits that the yarns would just slide away. The second is periodic boundary conditions, where fluctuations on opposite boundaries denoted by plus and minus should be equal. For example, this prohibits that u tilde allows overall stretching. But things are slightly more complicated because we have curved surfaces, where simple averaging does not work well. Consider this example of a curved surface with fluctuations indicated by arrows. The fluctuations cancel out and are thus okay under the averaging constraint, but would allow for sliding along the surface. Similarly, a different set of fluctuations would cancel and allow the yarns to shrink. So we somehow have to account for the curvature in the average. And indeed, by considering fluctuations relative to a rotational surface aligned frame, we can first align the frames before averaging to avoid these issues. A similar treatment for periodicity leads to our co-rotational periodic boundary conditions. And so the deformation on the boundary is constrained to be periodic within the local frames. Basically, what this constraint is doing is tiling the periodic yarn pattern along the curved surface. All that said, we now have a way of imposing macroscale deformations on a microscale yarn pattern, and we can turn our attention to the actual simulation. For our goal of fitting a purely elastic energy, we're specifically interested in the static equilibrium, that is, the state where the yarns are at rest and have adapted to the bulk deformation. In a nutshell, this amounts to constraint newton raphson optimization subject to the average and periodicity constraints. Starting from the bulk deformation of u tilde zero and finding the optimal value u tilde to minimize the total energy. For yarn stretching, bending, and twisting, we use discrete elastic rods, and for collisions, we use the forces from the original yarn level cloth. We omit modeling of friction between yarns. To simulate the periodic pattern, we have to consider these forces to be periodic as well. Similar to Leaf and colleagues who investigated periodic patterns of yarns under tension, we compute periodic forces by extending the pattern with duplicate degrees of freedom. For our core rotational periodicity, we can simply extend the surface and the pattern along with it. And with this, we can compute the forces and solve for updates to the degrees of freedom. There are a bunch more details to implementing the solver and periodic yarn twists, but I'll have to defer to the paper. All in all, the convergence looks a little something like this. Here, we see a rib knit with the periodic tile in red and the copies along the surface in gray. 
The pattern here is being stretched and bent, and we can see how the yarns tighten while still staying true to the curved surface. To finalize homogenization, at the converged state we compute the homogenized energy density psi bar simply as the total energy divided by the surface area of the periodic tile. This brings us to fitting an energy from these simulations. In a sense, psi bar is a complicated function, and evaluating it requires a small simulation. For cloth simulation, we need to evaluate its derivatives at every time step for each triangle of a mesh. To make this tractable, we first want to convert this function into something that is easier to evaluate. We do this by pre-computing data from lots of deformations and fitting the coefficients of a parametrized model. The question is how to parametrize the model. To reproduce the distinct direction-dependent material behavior, it needs to appropriately approximate the energy for arbitrary deformations. Following the method of Miguel et al., we approximate the full material response by a sum of 1D and 2D terms. The 1D terms model the main resistance to a single deformation such as stretching, shearing, or bending along a single direction. The 2D terms then model the residual, accounting for what is missing for two deformations at the same time. For example, area preservation or curling under tension would be modeled by the 2D terms. However, the data we generate can contain noise. Especially for compression, where yarns can end up in different buckled configurations with different levels of energy. We have to acknowledge this in the fitting procedure, since naive fitting can easily overfit and interpolate the noise with lots of local minima, which, among other issues, leads to noisy rest shapes during cloth simulation. Miguel et al. enforced convexity in all terms for robust simulation, but for our data, convex functions are not general enough to approximate the material as well. So instead, we developed a fitting scheme based on regularized splines and piecewise monotonicity, which results in a reasonably general fit while avoiding local minima. And it provides some robustness during simulation. Fitting the data for one pattern only takes a couple of seconds. You can find much more thorough information on our fitting heuristics in the paper and supplementary. This completes homogenization from yarn level simulations to a cloth scale energy density function, which you can now try to use in a cloth solver. We seamlessly integrate our materials into the adaptive remeshing cloth solver ArcSim. To repeat from before, finite element cloth simulation discretizes the cloth with a triangle mesh and computes internal forces according to an energy function. For our materials, the deformation is given by the fundamental forms, which we discretize on the triangle mesh, and then plug into the energy function that we fit before. Intuitively, you can imagine that each triangle represents a portion of the periodic yarn pattern that gets deformed along with it. The stress felt by the yarns is reflected in the homogenized energy of the triangle, which in turn leads to elastic forces on the triangle vertices. The main benefit is that now the size and shape of triangles can be chosen to fit the needs of the simulation and we could discretize a large and flat area with even a single triangle, compared to having to manage the entire yarn structure it represents. Finally, we can take a look at results produced with this method. To validate our homogenized materials, we do a side-by-side -side comparison between direct yarn level cloth simulation to homogenized cloth simulation. We investigate 30 by 30 centimeter patches of cloth for the two woven and three knit patterns that you see here and we stretch and drape the patches along two different directions for a total of 20 comparisons. Here, the top rows are the direct yarn level simulations and the bottom rows are mesh-based homogenized results. These tests give an impression of how varied the elastic behavior can be and that our models do manage to capture a lot of the important effects. For example, we see the flexibility of stretching knitted cloth compared to stiffer woven fabric and the remarkably different draped shapes in general. Let's take a closer look at a couple of examples. Here, we see a woven cloth being draped over a sphere. Our homogenized material on the right is able to reproduce the draped shape of the direct simulation on the left, which means that we were able to capture the bending and stretching stiffness of the pattern. Here, we compare stretching knitted cloth along two directions. Our material is able to mimic the effect of yarn loops pulling on each other to preserve area. We also see a slightly different stretching resistance along the other direction. The stockinette knit has an interesting tendency to bend or curl, which results in very distinct drape shapes, which our homogenized material is able to reproduce. The curling behavior is even more pronounced under tension, as shown here. This is a material response that depends on simultaneous stretching and bending, 
Since we can measure the energy for such deformations in our homogenization procedure, we can fit an energy function that shows this behavior. So our materials appear to be quite similar to the yarn level simulations, and already on these small scale examples, we can achieve speedups ranging from 3 to 46 times. Generating the data for fitting only takes about one hour per pattern, and fitting is instantaneous, so the pre-computation is fast. As a quick teaser, with more attention to rendering, you could displace yarn geometry according to the deformed mesh to get the homogenized results to look more like this. But where our homogenized materials really shine is at larger scales, like simulations of entire sweaters. Simulating these sweaters directly as yarns, especially for long animations, can be incredibly expensive. Our materials make this much more tractable while still showing the pattern-dependent material behavior, including the stretchiness of these two knit patterns or the curling of the stockinette knit. And so with the benefits of mesh-based simulation, highly dynamic karate situations are barely more difficult than the smaller examples before. Similarly, we can easily scale down the stitch size to where the texture of the yarn is barely visible. For yarn level simulation, this would increase the cost substantially, while for our homogenized materials, it barely increases the cost. And of course, we can do both things at once and simulate a t-shirt with a tiny stitch size. And finally, we can throw our materials onto arbitrary meshes to create a yarn bunny or a yarn medillo. To summarize, by stretching and bending a small periodic yarn patch and measuring its energy, we can generate data from which to fit a cloth scale material model. The model is then able to approximate the diverse pattern and direction dependent elastic properties of the material while being faster and much more scalable. To us, it was exciting to see that just from simple virtual measurements, we can actually reproduce the large scale behavior that emerges from complicated interactions of yarns colliding with and pulling on each other. At the same time, converting the information contained in these measurements into a robust model for simulation is a difficult task that we hope to see improved in the future. A limitation of our method is that we currently do not homogenize the effects of hysteresis and friction, which have been shown to be important for realistic cloth simulation and therefore could be a logical next step. Finally, our homogenization procedure is not limited to yarn patterns and could be used for a wider range of materials with layers or microstructures. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention.